trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move by Jordan! Both clubs going at each other. Michael Jordan and Xavier McDaniel having words. Smith. 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 Stop. Smith. Stop again. The Knicks over the Bulls in seven. The season ends for the New York Knicks at the hands of the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan with 49 points. Here's Jordan. And the immediate future is today, 5.30 Eastern Time for the Bulls and the Knicks. And, of course, there will be some electricity at Madison Square Garden. It's just the second meeting this season. Chicago won the first at home, 88-87, as Jordan scored the 51 points. It's a matchup of the two best records in the NBA. Marv Albert and Matt Gukas join us now for a report. Marveloso. All right, thank you, uh, Bob. And, yes, there is a well-publicized side issue to today's game. The first time the Knicks and the Bulls met uh, back on the 21st of January in Chicago. Michael Jordan lit up the Knicks for 51 points. A sensational all-around game. 51 points, still an NBA high for the season and when it ended, Jordan lashed out verbally at Nick coach Jeff Van Gundy. Michael visibly upset that Van Gundy had said Jordan uses his friendships and stature to lull some of his opponents that he cons them. And Michael got maximum motivation out of it. We talked about this episode with Jeff Van Gundy. Well, I really don't want to revisit that again. I, I, you know, I've, I've explained myself a few too many times, actually. But I, I would just say this is that uh, I have great respect for them as a group. Uh, but at the same time, I have my beliefs. I have never said anything that I, I don't believe. I believe everything I've told people. So I'm not going to apologize for anything I've said. And at the same time, I want to temper what I say from now on because I want to, whatever I say, I want it to go to benefit our team and not hurt our team. Whether it did or not the last game, uh, that's anybody's guess. Uh, but I just want to make sure I temper my honesty a little bit more, say what I say to help our team and leave the rest alone. Well, Jeff Van Gundy intended to send a message to his team, and that was don't show too much respect to Michael Jordan. But Michael is a master at the mental game, and he turned all of that around in his favor. And Matt, uh, the latest uh, Nick starting uh, point guard, Chris Childs, who's missed the last five games with a sprained wrist. He did practice yesterday, but uh, his status for today is set to be a game-time decision. Back to Bob. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And at halftime, we'll hear Michael Jordan. Jordan's thoughts on the last meeting between the Knicks and the Bulls and Jeff Van Gundy's comments. Now, the Knicks almost always play the Bulls tough. Almost always the Bulls wind up winning, but they play them tough. What are the keys today? Well, I'm going to talk about the New York side of things. And, uh, you know, they've been winning games in bunches, and Jeff Van Gundy's been employing uh, a lot of various types of lineups. Uh, he's had a lot of success with the three-guard rotation. But looking at the stats, and they jump right off the page, pivotal to the Knicks' success today is to play Larry Johnson at small forward for long minutes. It seems as though the Bulls have a certain vulnerability to being attacked by the small forwards. Now Pete, with the Knicks playing well of late, Patrick Ewing has averaged 28 points in the last eight games, shot about 50% from the floor. Why is he getting more offensive opportunities? Because opponents are afraid to double him. In the past, uh, the, they were wide open. They had only stocks to worry about. But now they've got five guys that they have to pay attention to, four and Patrick Ewing. You've got four outside shooters. You know, Larry Johnson, as Julia said, has stepped up his game. Allen Houston, Charles Oakley can hit the outside shot. And Chris Childs might be their biggest clutch shooter. So he's going to be freed up a lot more down low, Patrick. But Phil Jackson told me a couple hours ago that, yes, he does not like to double up any, double on anybody, particularly Patrick Ewing. But at some time today, tonight, he's going to have to go to him so the others don't get off early and often. All right, a game to look forward to. The Knicks and the Bulls, 5.30 Eastern time from the Garden. I try to make the, the game uh, perfection. I try to make it a perfect game for myself. His way is to befriend them, to soften them up, uh, to try to feel, uh, make them feel like he cares about them. And then he goes out there and physically tries to destroy him. Van Gundy said that I was a con man, which I've never seen con man use in a, in a um, 
in a polite or respectful way. For some reason, league-wide, it's important to be liked by him. I have no idea why. You take negative criticism in a, in, in a I'd take it in a positive way to go out and improve the point. I'm sure that uh, Michael will use this for motivation. Right around the screen. Top of the circle jumper. MJ has really got it cooking. Takes a couple times. Fades. Fires. You bet. I compete harder with my friends more so than with my enemies and uh, I don't think Magic Johnson laid aside and let me win a championship in 1991 because we were good friends. When you see me you know, maybe joking and kidding around with some of the players, sure I want to uh, create friends so that the stigma of Michael Jordan being such a dominant player and, and such a, a respected person that it doesn't infringe an individual coming up and being a friend to me. I want people to view me as a person, but yet, you know, when we step on the basketball court, I want them to challenge me as a basketball player. I just think Michael is going to be coming a jump shooter, and I don't think he he, he, he puts himself in the, in the body situation where you can knock him around a little bit and be physical with him. For these criticism, I think a lot of the times it's the motivation for their players uh, to give themselves up or raise their level of intensity towards me. Defense don't allow me to drive. You know, they give me the outside shot. If you look at most of the scouting reports in the league, a lot of teams will say, well, force him left or make him take the outside jump shot. You know, by no means are they going to give me a direct lane to the basket. If so, I would go to the basket. You talk about motivation and, and finding different kinds of motivation. Well, it's not going to happen a lot where coaches are going to say these kind of statements to motivate you. Where else do you find the motivation? In the course of the game, uh, within myself, uh, challenging myself, you play a team that's not, you know, above 500. It's a natural tendency to have a letdown. So the challenge is don't go with the natural tendency. Let's go opposite of the tendency. Or if you want to get individually, you know, maybe I get a triple double. It's always something uh, somewhere I can find that challenge. And once I find it, then I'm in the floor of the game. I'm in the thought process of the game. Come on, I'll give you a jump shot right now. I'll give you a jump shot. Shoot. Well, you don't want it. The game has evolved to be more of a mental challenge for me than a physical. You know, and that's one of the reasons that I still play the game, because I can challenge myself mentally. Well, he keeps finding those challenges, Pete. You hear a lot of guys say today, I want a ring. And you can almost infer from that if they get a ring that they're satisfied. You gotta go back maybe to Bill Russell to find a guy like Michael who was never satisfied. Michael's got the four rings, you get the feeling he'd take 44 if he could.